What's going on, everybody out there in Badger Nation? Steven, welcome to 2020. What a time to be alive. That's right. New year, new Badger. New year, new Badger. It hasn't been a year like this since 1010, and it won't be until 3030. Right, How does so that actually, make you feel? Yeah, we should already change our title from, because uh, I think we're talking about like this re- sort of resolutions for 2020. We should say resolutions for the next decade. Uh, decade. Yeah. Damn, or for the next 110 years until 3030. True. That's better. Let's change the title <laughs> yes. right now. Uh, did you have a good New Year's? Is that a trick question? <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> a trick. We, we're the, recording this we're before We're recording this before. Yes, yes my, New Year's, my New Year's was a good old time. I went down to uh, San Diego with some friends and we hung out. <laughs> That's a good, so we're recording this before the New Year. So this is a good thing. You could see that. You could see how honest we are. I wanted to see if I can catch Steven, <laughs> but I couldn't. Uh, so lie, this is a good segue into what we're talking about today, lying, bad habits. Today, we're going to be talking about the seven bad habits to kick in 2020, inspired by the seven deadly sins, which, uh, we were just, the, yeah, we were just reading up on. Uh, so I was kind of curious where that came from. It came from, uh, the fourth century monk Evagrius Ponticus. There you go, everybody. <laughs> that, that's it. Um, kick, you know, everyone out there listening, can you name the seven deadly sins by memory? Here we go. We'll name them off real quick for you, and then we'll jump into each one. Sloth, lust, gluttony, greed, wrath, envy, pride. How'd you do? Let's jump into our main segment. <laughs> What's in the box? Not to, you give me the What's gun. in the fucking box? Alrighty, Steven. So we have got probably the biggest sin that we should stop doing. The the probably the most popular bad habit to kick in 2020, and that is sloth, laziness. Uh, I dare say that inactivity is the biggest issue in every single account. I think it's so big that if you take someone who is brand new, like their first week of doing Amazon PPC versus someone that's been doing it for five years, if that person who's been doing it for five years is kind of lazy, maybe they don't check in as much, maybe they're only in there once a month versus someone who is going to be in there every single day thinking about it, uh, asking themselves what they can do better, researching things if they see something, asking questions to communities, all these different things. That person who's only got a week of experience, that'll be a better account than someone who's been doing it longer, but is lazier. Agree? Right. Disagree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's actually kind of like a, a concept too. You kind of, you ha- you're in a different mindset when you're first starting out with something. Um, you know, if it's a new job, uh, yeah, new anything, like you, your first impressions of everything, you, you, there's, there's a bit of a naivety to you that actually is a strength uh, because you're, you mm-hmm. notice things more things that someone who's been doing this for a long time wouldn't because they become numb to certain things. Um, you know, cause they've, they've seen metrics for, anyways, I'm going off topic, but yes. Uh, one of those things is y- you, you start to kind of go on cruise control, especially if it's been the same account that you've been managing for five years and things are really humming along. Um, I mean, things do typically get easier, uh, as the account has been just the campaigns have been running for longer, but yeah, the, the tendency there can be to not be proactive, uh, not, yeah, just not really keep a cl- close eye on it uh, and just not really cut out the time for regular PPC autom- uh, optimization. Right. You know, just a few episodes ago, we had a list, of, a list of all the tasks that we put into a project management board that should probably be in the listeners' project management boards when they're optimizing Amazon PPC. You know, quarterly tasks, monthly, weekly, daily tasks. When you start adding all of them up for sponsored products, sponsored brands, sponsored display, all the different ad types, it's a lot of stuff to do. So if someone is being slothy inside their accounts, they're going to be missing out on bid optimization. And the longer they are off target with their bid optimization, the worse their account will get. So simply being active, checking in on on daily basis is checking in on a regular basis, checking the numbers, um, seeing what you have to be doing, building your project management board and actually executing on these things. You got to be active in your account. So at least at bare minimum, even the, even the smallest account that only spends a hundred dollars a month 
even that account needs to be checked in and optimized on at least a weekly basis. So if you're ever going more than you know four or five business days without optimizing your account, that's a huge issue and that is a bad habit to kick in 2020. Yeah, uh, that's a great point, Mike. Um, another thing that I've just seen is a lot of people, they they write in, uh, they, they say they've been listening to the Ad Badger podcast for a long time. They say they've been implementing everything that we've been doing, RPSB, like bid changes, all that stuff. And then they, you know, they sign up for the app. Um, they, they create an account and then they ask for some input. So I'll open up their account. I'll log in, kind of take a look at it. And I see that like the campaign naming systems are all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like even today, I, I won't say what the campaign was, but Mike, I think you, uh, you might've seen it, but someone wrote in the campaign title was just like a single word that was a completely generic word that had no relevance, no like, like just goals or, or any, any information that was helpful in it. Uh, and just like, you see like, yeah, like even just the like campaign structures, like how they're grouping their ads and keywords, that sloth, that is a. That is a, a sin, which will one day be deadly for you. Yes, kick it in 2020. Let's move on to lust, Stephen. Um, potentially everyone's favorite deadly sin, which is lust. This is fantasizing over chatter that you hear online, uh, having somebody post a screen cap of like, or clicking on a YouTube video that says how I got a 1% ACoS in 12 seconds that, that, that you can also do. And there's like all these crazy things out there. Right. A lot of lust, a lot of fantasizing sensationalism in the digital marketing space. Um, and I feel like, if anything, hopefully this podcast is a way, is a light in the darkness of a sort of shining light on that sort of like the hype and just really focusing, really trying to remind people that every account is different. Every product is different. In fact, I dare say you can have the exact same product as someone else, but maybe they've been just advertising for a year and you are just getting started. You're going to have very, very different experiences and there's going to be different things to think about, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned marketer or a new product, seasoned product, new brand, seasoned brand. There's so many considerations that people take. And I even dare say the people posting some of those screen caps uh, can sometimes not even truly understand how their results got so good. Um, I, you know, if you, if, if a large brand that had huge brand recognition were to waltz in and we started managing their account, it would be way different than it would be if it was a completely brand new unknown brand. So got to be aware of, you know, a habit to kick is really look at your own campaigns and, you know, definitely pay attention to what's going on and what's being talked about, but really try to get information from people that you trust, uh, people that would actually like form a relationship with you. And you know, they're not just trying to hype themselves up or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A uh, couple things I want to say about the uh, deadly sin, bad habit of lust is I think a lot of times and this gets into envy a little bit, which we're talking about later, but a lot of times, you know, you'll see the results of someone else and they've got the best sellers badge, the Amazon's choice badge. And, you know, you're in your first year of selling a product and you're wondering why your ads aren't ranking like they are. Um, but like that other seller has probably, I mean, in cases that I've seen a lot of times, like the, the that like other seller that you're looking at has been in that has been selling for five, 10 years. Like, they've been there for a long time. And so you really just kind of need to like practice patience and, and, you know, like settle your desires. And I guess your expectations, um, as it pertains to less is, is just like learn to be patient. You got to wait for it. You know, um, mm -hmm. if you have a good product, if you're being smart with the way you're marketing it, um, like that, that time will come for you. Uh, but yeah, the other thing I was going to say that I think contributes to a lot of, uh, PPC lust is clickbait, uh, like headlines. Um, even people posting on social stuff, like look at how we like tripled our MRR over like in two months or something like that. Like you see these things and it's like the one secret that will guarantee you success in Amazon. Like you see these clickbaity titles. Um, Mike, you know that that's never something that we want to do. That's why we, we mm -hmm. put a lot of thought into our titles and we try to keep, make them engaging and captivating, but not 
you know, not giving false promises that, that don't deliver, um, which is a big yeah. part of what kind of, you know, fuels lust. P PPC, uh, PPC optimization is definitely an uphill climb. You got to put your hiking shoes and your hiking gear on as opposed to uh, like a water slide of yeah. ease down the water slide. Uh, so that's something that we'll always try to be aware of. We should have just a pure clickbait episode where we just say absolutely everything <laughs> all the time and just see what happens. Like I when you recommend this podcast to a friend, like send yeah. them this one. I have a tendency <laughs> to be clickbaity when I'm like writing uh, headlines and stuff and, and Mike's always pulling me back. So you guys got to thank him for mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Um, uh, we had someone apply for a position recently that actually put clickbait as a skill on their resume. You, <laughs> you want to make some clickbait? I'll help you do it. Let's move on to gluttony. Steven, walk us through some of the bad habits associated with this that people should be getting rid of in 2020. Gluttony is basically overindulgence. So, mm -hmm. uh, you keyword dump. For example, yes. Uh, maybe you are, you want, you don't, you're not satisfied with, you know, a lot of impressions. You want all of the impressions. <laughs> all of the impressions. You're not satisfied with a really good ACOS. You think that you could, you you deserve like a single digit five percent ACOS, even though you're currently at fifty percent. Mm -hmm. And your conversion rates are two percent. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the, yeah, the idea is it's, it's a lot of dumping is, is what gluttony is. It's, uh, it's casting your wet, your, sorry, casting your net so wide without any refinement, uh, no negative keywords, um, using a lot of broad match keywords, using a lot of auto campaigns. I mean, that, that would be where the majority, so if you were to sort your campaigns by spend, uh, the biggest spenders would be your auto campaigns. And maybe a few manual campaigns, mm -hmm. if you clicked into those and you looked at your keywords and you sorted it again by spend, the biggest spenders would be the broad match, the phrase match. Um, so, and, and there's no, you know, keyword extraction. There's no refinement. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, like no negative keywords. The other thing you might be doing is ASIN dumping, where mm -hmm. um, it goes into sloth a little bit, but rather than doing like single product ad groups, like we've talked about, SPAGs, you would actually be throwing all of your ASINs just into one ad group, um, into a single right. campaign. Um, Even though just, they would benefit from being segmented out, you'd probably right. increase your volume. Correct. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's everything I, I had to say on that one. Mike, did you want to add anything about that? In terms of uh, gluttony, so if you think of like a fat campaign, one with like 100 plus keywords in a single ad group, to flip that, think of a lean campaign, you know, one that is tight and refined and like you know what's inside and it's labeled properly like that and you can move sort of quicker and it moves you're able to move through your account faster that's what that's what comes up to me when i think about like a gluttonous account so like think of the flip side of that as being lean being well defined refined you know where the products are you don't have dozens and dozens of different products inside one ad group uh, and instead it's leaner. You know, only right. have a few in there that makes sense. Maybe it's a single product ad group. So you, think lean instead of gluttonous. Right. You want to get cut with your campaigns. <laughs> Let's move on to greed. Greed. I think to put it into a sentence, I would say this is when you know uh, someone has uh, the bad habit or the deadly sin of greed. Their sales are good, so they double their bids or they double their budgets. Uh, just a real blanket statement. It's like, it's like, dude, like you're not satisfied with uh, with the sales that you're getting. I mean, I mean, say you're at your target ACOS, but you just like want more sales. And so you think if I just increase my bids, increase my budgets, um, that will guarantee me more sales with like that are, you know, within my target, within my profit. Um, and it just it just doesn't work that way, does it? Yeah. So, so being too aggressive, you know, there, there does come a point where you do have some diminishing returns. You know, you can't permanently increase your bids and increase your budgets forever. Um, so sort of recognizing where the boundaries are of an account. Uh, I, I'm, I also feel that there's some goal setting associated with greed in the sense of, you know, if you were to ask people, you know, how much do you want to spend on your ads? And I think it's a good sentiment to say as much as possible, as long as it's meeting my requirements, like maybe it's a target A cost requirement, or maybe it's an ad spend to total Amazon revenue requirement, whatever it might be, 
I think it's good to have that sort of spirit, but at the same time, we need to take it back and sort of say, hey, I'm, I'm at point A. My next goal is to get to point B. So I'd like these to be my goals as opposed to just having them be, oh, well, you know, I'm spending $1,000 a month right now and I want to be spending $10,000 a month. It's like, well, you know, like one step at a, that's a 10x increase. Right. Um, so f- sort of being a little bit more clear and grounded when we set our goals and also do like set goals too, because that'll really focus you in on, hey, I'm spending $1,000 a month at a 30% ACoS. Within the next three months, I'd like to kick this up to maybe $3,000 a month at a 20% or 25 or whatever the ACoS might be. That allows you to set goals and, and sort of be more realistic with how you're operating in your account. It sort of sets the tone for your account. Or for a larger account, it might be my total ad spend should be 10% of my total Amazon revenue. And currently it's 15. So I want to scale back my ad spend a little bit to get a better ratio there. So setting goals is what comes up to me when I talk about greed. Right. Yeah. Another thing that comes to mind, um, I mean, so far we've actually talked, I think everything has been strictly about campaign management. Um, but there's a lot of Mm -hmm. other bad habits that are like kind of happen outside of seller central or vendor central. Yes. And one mm-hmm. of those things is, you know, how you like communicate and interact with your peers and your uh, community. Um, but a big thing where I think people can get greedy is when it comes to contributing to, and, I, I, and I'm not talking about like our own Facebook page. Like there's a lot of Facebook pages, Reddit. there's like a lot of things out there where, where people can go to, to kind of build community, um, you know, mutually learn. But a lot of people, um, they treat those as basically just a one-way transactional thing. Like they go in and they're only trying to build their own brands, their own awareness. Like they just want, you know, it's a freelancer or it's an agency and they just want people to come to them. And so they'll go and like, you know, like some comments or reply to things. And they're really just trying to draw people their way so that they can, you know, make more money. And hey, I'm not, go ahead and do that. Like make, make money, uh, but like bring some value too, you know, uh, don't just make it a one-way thing. Um, so yeah, people basically not, I think a big thing too, cause Mike, we just brought on another, uh, a, a new hire who is uh, a true, just like expert and, or not expert. Cause we don't like that word, but, uh, just, I would say a wizard when it comes to Amazon PPC. And, uh, he and I, we've been like, you know, it's, it's still just his first week and we've already been like challenging each other's, I want to say convictions on different strategies. Uh, and it's been a very like good sharpening refining process for both of us. Um, we both like, we see eye to eye on a lot of things and like we communicate really well, but I'm just really v- noticing the value in that kind of like community contribution. Um, you can have an idea that sounds really great to you. Um, I, I think, uh, there's a quote that goes, uh, you know, the person who speaks first is right until someone else responds. And the idea is like, you know, if there is no challenge to your view or to what you're saying, it sounds good. It seemed like the default Mm -hmm. is like the default assumption is like, oh yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, But then someone else comes in and they reply to a comment and they be like, well, that doesn't make sense in this situation. And it's like, oh, frick, you're right. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the thing, the thing that I see a lot is people use, and I think it's just the very nature of Facebook groups where it, it makes sense, right? Like, hey, I have this problem. Let me jump to a Facebook group and drop a question in there. And, you know, you'll probably get some replies, and that's great. However, it's so transactional, right? Like, a lot of these Facebook groups, there are so many people. There's so many free ones. I mean, we have a free Facebook group uh, for now, for now uh, but it's it's it can be very transactional. Like, you, you someone comes in and asks a question, and then you don't hear from them in six months until they have their next question. Mm-hmm. And one of the one of the things with that is, throughout my career, I've been in PPC masterminds, and where I sort of meeting with other PPC professionals, asking our asking each other like, what's one problem that you had in an account? How did how would everyone else solve it? Or what is one thing that you learned over the you know last week? Something like that was so invaluable. A, because of the format, and just B, because it was focused on relationship building as opposed to just a transactional, what's the answer to this? It's like, yes, you do want a place to go and get problems solved quickly, but it's so much more valuable if you can 
contribute to that ecosystem. If you can actually like drop in and share your own experience, you know, good, bad, ugly, whatever it might be, it just helps add to the brain power of whatever community you're in. So I think we've said a lot about this sort of greed component. Um, so 2020, uh, I hope to personally be more giving and more selfless with some of our information with our community. So we want to do some things where we can actually structure it a little bit more and actually focus on, you know, long-term, higher level communication, relationship building, as opposed to Facebook, which is good for transactional stuff. So yeah. got some changes with that coming in 2020. Mm -hmm. So that is the fourth uh, bad habit of the seven uh, bad habits. Number five is wrath. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Mike, tell us a little bit about this one. Right. I think this is a quick one, but I think spending, this is, you know, wrath. It's like, I think it's too much hate watching the Amazon search result page. Uh, <laughs> you know, just looking at it, spending so much time hate watching competitors, um, so much time hating on Amazon, whatever it might be. And I think there's really good constructive criticism for Amazon's ad platform. Uh, some things they do well, some things that can be improved. Uh, and I do think there's good time and reason to keep watch on your competitors. But I do see sometimes people like cross over too much into watching that SERP, too much time watching those competitors, mm -hmm. where potentially that time could be better spent. Um, so that's sort of what I think of when wrath comes in. Yeah. I think another thing is maybe venting to your coworkers or other people and talking about, you know, how stupid your competition is or like what a pain in the ass your client is. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, that's, you know, you don't need to, to spread the hate. Um, another big thing is, is I think just blaming other people for your problems. Uh, like, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you messed up with like the other sins that we were talking about, like sloth or whatever, or uh, you were being lazy and then like the campaigns don't perform and you're like, oh, Amazon A9 algorithm, so mm -hmm. dumb. Uh, and and not actually just taking responsibility for uh, your own performance. Right. Let's jump into Envy. Uh, so Envy, uh, what is a bad habit associated with sort of PPC that, that, is envious that's a, that's maybe a bad habit that people can drop this coming year yeah this kind of goes back to kind of hate watching but basically uh you know watching your competition and becoming envious of their ad rank and um that can actually cause like like it's kind of interesting i mean the ppc is for sure like data science oriented but there's for sure a lot of like psychological things that come into play as well like you see your competition with the top spot. And so you start really increasing your bids. That doesn't make a lot of logical sense, but you're trying to win that top spot. You're trying to beat the competition. You basically become like, yeah, you, you become overcome with uh, jealousy over your competition and you want to beat them. And it becomes like a, uh, I guess even like a pride thing that we're going to talk about next. But uh, that's one way where I can see that, you know, cause bad Amazon PPC habits where then you start overspending and, spending inefficiently just because you're trying to get what someone else has. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. This relates back to lust too. So, so seeing something and being, becoming envious of it, uh, and realizing, you know, that like, Hey, I need to put in the work in order to get there. Um, so yeah, that's envy. Yeah. One other thing is, you know, if people are posting their wins, um, and posting their results and being like, dude, look what I did in December. And then you just like get super jealous about that and get all, mm -hmm. you know, heated and dismayed. And maybe it makes you even want to quit because you're like, man, I'll, I'll yeah. never be that guy. Um, kind of the going, Instagram effect. Yeah, exactly. And going but back to that first thing yeah. you said, uh, Mike, when we first kicked off is, is basically every account's different. Um, every product is different. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. don't sweat it. Yes. Jumping into pride. Um, you know, pride, I think is, is one of these things, you know, we often like to think that PPC is a purely numbers, purely spreadsheet, uh, endeavor, but it's very emotional. And one of the things that I see is this sort of prideful thinking uh, in the sense that I, I don't think it's people that listen to this show. Cause I, I feel like we're very not this way, but basically you never want to think 
that you have completed your learning. Uh, I think it's called like the Dunning-Kruger effect, where when you are just getting started, you know that you know nothing. And then you learn a little bit, and all of a sudden you think you know everything. And then you continue to learn more, and you realize, wait a second, there's way more to this than I thought there was. I actually know just a small percentage. I want to continue learning. I want to become a continuous learner. Mm -hmm. And anything is always up for debate even things that we say on the show you know it could be out of date in a couple of months it could be up for a different perspective maybe there was a contingency we didn't think of mm -hmm. so I, I never like the word amazon guru that really makes me <coughs> makes me a little <laughs> sick actually just to just to hear that but like there is no such thing as an amazon guru it's really just in a perfect world it's somebody that likes to learn as much as possible share as much as possible um, and that's what I, I, I consider myself as someone that is trying to soak up as much as I possibly can, uh, and share it with people. And that's something that you've mentioned on a previous podcast episode was, uh, you gave that, that, uh, uh, allegory of the empty cup where mm -hmm. this guy, this, he's seeking some monk sitting at the top of some mountain and he gets to him and, uh, basically, I mean, you know, correct me if I, I mean, yeah, you could. Why don't you just finish it it's real quick? Already off, it's already off <laughs> yeah. track. A, a, lo a long time ago, there is this ancient warrior, and he thought that he was the best warrior that he could possibly be. Uh, and then he went around, he bragged, and he boasted, sort of like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, and then eventually he hears that there's this like old ancient warrior at the top of the mountain, and he's like, let me go see this guy. Like This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. So he goes up to the top of the mountain. He's like, what do you got to teach me, old man? Like, you can't possibly teach me anything. Old man starts pouring him a cup of tea, pouring it, pouring it, keeps pouring it. Uh, and the, get, the tea gets everywhere. And the warrior is like, what are you doing, old man? And you're like, the, the, he's like yelling at the old man. The old man just sits there and he's like, you're like this cup, so full that nothing else can go in. Come back to me when you're an empty cup. And it's like, boom. Boom. <laughs> so like we all have to be empty cups. Yeah. And that's actually something that, you know, when we were going through a hiring process, we didn't hire some people because they, uh, they were like full cups. Um, and we wanted someone who knew that we wanted someone who, who knew they were good, but knew that they had a lot to learn too. Um, who, mm -hmm. who didn't have pride essentially. Don't be a guest on. Don't be a guest on. Um, one final thing that I will say about pride is this kind of goes back to the community thing, but um, posting wins or sharing your knowledge that you, because you think you're super smart and you're really just trying to draw attention to yourself uh, and not actually like bring value and contribute to the community. Um, I've I've seen that happen a lot. So kind of all in one, thinking you're the best, uh, not really learning. I don't as think in our I don't think in our community. I haven't really seen this in in Badger Nation. Uh, I think if people no the badgers are, are good, the, the badgers show, are good people. <laughs> that's right, for sure. So I'm like super happy to be able to communicate with our audience because I actually don't feel I actually feel like a lot of these these ones like greed and pride and uh, I feel like we actually don't have those in our community. So I'm super stoked on that. So thanks everyone. And there you have it. Those are the seven deadly sins or the bad Amazon PPC habits that you need to kick in 2020. That's right. You know, next year we are going to be diving back into the campaigns and talking about 2020 predictions. You know, what will be changing very likely inside Amazon PPC in 2020. Uh, these are some of my most you know, favorite episodes because we really get to dig into what has been what has Amazon been doing over the last few years? Where is that trend going? And seeing if we can connect some of those dots into the future. Have a good one, everyone. Hopefully, at this point in time, you have a little le you're a little less sinful. That's yeah, great. we'll we'll make sure we put up a personality quiz that says which deadly sin are you on our website. <laughs> yeah. uh, just kidding, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> have a good one, everyone. Mm -hmm.